Tessa just texted me and asked if you'll record, which you just said that, so. <laughs> no, I just did. That's good. And we're recording, so hey, guys. Uh, okay, hey, I just have a couple things in terms of, um, like, housekeeping type things with the tracker, and then a couple things I wanted to run by you guys, sort of a little bit what we talked about last night in our coach Zoom, but with this being the push Zoom, this is more focused on you and growing your business and really taking that consistent action every day. Um, and so we're going to also talk about things like how to avoid too many calls to action. And there's a lot going on and you don't want every post to be like, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. Join me. So we'll talk about that. And lastly, we're going to, I know Heather and Kathy both posted questions. So I definitely want to get going right now. So we have plenty of time to answer them. Um, okay. So first thing, thanks guys for being here. I would still like to do these every other week. I'll kind of get your feedback for whatever night works best for the majority. Um, but this is how we're going to finish the year strong. We're in, heading into quarter four officially. And I think keeping this momentum as a push group is, is really what we need at this point. So the first thing in terms of the tracker, um, just make sure, I know it's going to be in week three, it's going to be really easy just to drop your initials everywhere. I'm constantly looking at that tracker and thinking if we need to change anything, right? So even just today, if you'll notice, I made a change to instead of a business breadcrumb uh, to do a transformation Tuesday. So because you're already doing a business breadcrumb post on Thursday. So make sure, especially when you go in, make sure you have to click whatever week we are at the bottom. You guys will see that, but make sure you are reading everything. Cause like once a week I'm looking through it, I'm seeing what's working, seeing what's not working. And if you guys like, this is always open to feedback. So if you're like, Hey, it feels like I'm doing too many of these, or I'm not sure I'm getting the results from these. Let me know because we do need to post daily as coaches, but we can have more stuff in our stories. And I'd like to hear your feedback on what you're posting, but you need to be consistently showing up in a place that doesn't disappear, which is your posts, not your stories. Um, so that really builds a pretty Instagram feed that builds consistency on Facebook, whatever you're using for that. Um, but make sure you do check it out before you just drop your initials. But awesome job. No one fell below 75% last week. You guys obviously are here. You want to be here. You're doing the work. It just makes me really proud. Okay. Um, just talked to Stephanie about this earlier. And I think this is, and I think this might have been Heather, one of Heather Murray's questions, but tracking PBJ invites on Instagram. This is this new, this new system that I have just come up with that I think is going to work well for me. As you guys know, I don't bring someone into my master tracking list until we'd be Facebook friends. Um, just because if I'm sending an, an invite, it's going to be a really cold market invite on Instagram. And I'm not necessarily, I am going to do the five, three, one follow-ups, but I'm not going to follow up after that if they don't respond. So here's what I found is probably going to work for me. I literally just started this. I have a Google sheet and I'll show you because I just created it right now. Um, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm just using my Instagram inbox as my tracking system, which I know normally I say don't ever do that, but Instagram is sort of its own world because it's cold market. Like it's not your um, Facebook friends, your cousin that you know that, or someone that said follow back up with me. Like we get a lot of that on Facebook. We don't get so much of that, at least for me on Instagram. My fear was I'm sending all these PBJ invites and then once a week after I've done my five through one follow up, if a week later they never responded to either message, then I'm going to delete the message and unfollow them which is fine, that's what I'm doing. So first message, PBJ invite, no response. Second message, 531 follow up, I message them about something unrelated, no response. A week later, I delete, I unfollow. Because every week is, like every Saturday is when I'm doing my 531. The problem was, if someone replies and is nice, but says no thanks, but yeah, looking forward to supporting you, which I've had, I did not want to delete that message, and I don't wanna unfollow them, because we've connected, I don't want to be embarrassed and like send them the same message like two weeks later. Do you guys know what I'm saying? Like, let's say they like my photo. I'm like, Hey, by the way, have you ever, and she'll be like, uh, yeah, like you already asked me that. So because of that, I just created a Google sheet on my own called, which I'll pull up right now. Um, okay. You should be able to see it in a second. This is all, can you guys tell me if you can see this? Yeah. Okay. This is all I did. I opened this Google sheet, which obviously Google sheets can go to your phone as well. And I just said, Instagram PBJ invites. And this is just for me personally. This is not like a shared document. Instagram PBJ invites said, no, don't unfollow. 
So all I did was I just started writing down names of Instagram users that have followed me back, that responded to the message, that were very nice, but just said, no, thank you. So I'm going to delete that message so that my inbox stays cleaned up, but I'm not going to unfollow them. But if they like my post and I think their name sounds familiar, I'm going to check my list before I would send them a message. And then I know like, and then if down the road, that's all I want to show you. Like if down the road they've been watching my stuff every day or they're liking a lot of my posts, I might send them another message, but I'll cater it to be like, hey, I know we talked about this a long time ago. Have things changed? Are you interested at all in, in joining me? Does that make sense, guys? Okay. Were you guys kind of having the same issue in terms of how to track all this PBJ Instagram stuff? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, because I think unless you want it, I mean, you can certainly add everyone you message for the very first time to your tracking system, but the rate of response on Instagram is just not what it's going to be usually on Facebook because you're dealing with cold market. So I think if you do that, you're going to add a lot of people to your tracking that never get back to your initial message anyway. So to recap, PBJ invites, everyone knows what they are. I say we still lead with that on Instagram. 531 follow up if no one responds to the first message. Every week, every Saturday, I'm just checking my inbox. So if I go all the way to the bottom and they, I did a PBJ invite, I did a 531 follow up, they never responded, I delete, I unfollow. If they did respond and say no, add them to my tracking, delete the message to keep my, so my inbox is not like piling and piling and piling up. And then um, just keep an eye out. You know, if, if they're still really following me and maybe a couple weeks later I say something, but I, I reference the fact that I know I talked to them about it before. Any questions? I know, I think that was a question, wasn't it? Someone was asking that. I'm gonna get to the group. Okay. Um, all right, which kind of leads me into, I, I don't want to get us to the point where it feels like you're doing a call to action on every single post, not story, but meaning like we have a lot going on, right? We've got our product group starting this end of this week. We've got our launch group starting next week. It seems like every post could be some sort of call to action, but I want you to take care in not doing too many of those I would say one, maybe two maximum a week on your posts. Now stories, I'll always say, I mean, for now, social media is always changing. I think it's totally fine to do a call to action on your stories once a day, meaning like a poll or something to get people to respond to you because it's a story and you're adding multiple stories per day. So with call to actions, like once a week, depending on what's you know happening for us this week. So for me, that's definitely the product group that's happening on Thursday. Um, my goal is to have behind the scenes conversations. Obviously guys, you do your call to action post, but it's, it's not really gonna be effective unless you're doing the, the background messaging too. But you don't wanna turn into this Instagram or Facebook feed that's just call to action, call to action, call to action, because no one wants to always feel like you're asking them to do something which is also why we have the posting ideas schedule in the group so that you are sharing helpful tips, going live, talking about your life, your lifestyle. And then weaving. I know I had call to actions on Sunday. If you want to do a call to action, the different point of the week, that's fine. You know, you don't have to exactly stick. The schedule is not like you have to hundred percent do this. I want you to do those activities, but if you want to switch some things around, go for it. Um, so I think that's going to really help Just stay mindful of, unless you're, you know, offering help in another way, like, for free, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily do a call to action every post. I think Instagram posts are a little bit different because you can always say link in the bio for more information. I might do that more than once a week, but specifically to Facebook, I'm going to try not to drop a link in the comments or a Facebook group in the comments more than once a week. But what I said on, I think it was last night when I post my refresh stuff, I'm going to do it Wednesday night. Cause I want people to get in. I might post it again on Thursday or edit the picture but you can post it, make sure it doesn't auto tag you and then tag yourself the next day. That's a way to repopulate the, the picture on it, on Facebook. Any questions about that? Okay. And then as far as um, your Instagram bio link, the website link you can have in your Instagram feed, I would be, be cognizant to change that up as often as you need to. I use Google, I have a Google form for everything. So right now my Google form, my bio link is to get more information on our product group. So that's what's happening on Thursday and Friday. 
my favorite link is bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y. Some of you may use it. I may not have told everyone about it. I take the Google form link and I open up bit.ly and I paste that Google form link. It shortens it even more and I can customize it, which I just think looks cute. So you can create a free account if you want to do something like this, bit.ly. Um, like one of mine is like get fit with Ash, like bit.ly dot L-Y slash. It's just a cute little link that fits in your Instagram bio. Do you have to do that? No, it's just a cute thing that you can do if you want. Um, but what I think is helpful is to have these different Google forms that you can just simply rotate, right? Like if it's a product group, if it's like a kickoff group, if it's a glimpse into coaching, you can just switch out that Instagram bio as often as you want. Okay. And then, like I was saying on Instagram, if you do reference, Hey, fill out the form in the bio for more information. If you do that a couple times a week, I don't think that's necessarily a call to action. It's more like, here's where you can find more information. The call to action thing was more specifically to Facebook. Does that make sense? Can you guys make sense? No, I don't want to just talk. I want to make sure like all this is helpful. Um, okay. Has anyone used Bitly? Yeah, other yes. Yeah, it's cool. It's a free, you can create a free account and you can customize these <clears throat> small little websites that you can change your Google Forms. Okay, um, let's see. So Liz brought up a really good point about the participation in our, um, in our launch group. And I was kind of thinking on that a little bit more. Um, what if we did some sort of point system in the, in the launch group? Did I tell you guys about this? Okay, so like if we did like a, a file and we had like day, almost like daily challenges, but there was a file of new prospects, not like I know sometimes last time the, some current challengers joined the launch group and that was fine, but this would be strictly for people that you have been talking to that are interested in a fit club and you plug them into the launch group that starts next Monday, which is October 1st. So if we had like day one was like your challenge of the day is tell us about yourself, you know, post a picture of you and your family in the comments for two points. And we can have a file in the, uh, the launch group with these people's names that we can go in and update the points throughout the 10 days. Cause our deadline to order would be October 10th, uh, which is a, the following Wednesday. And so day two, tell us about your biggest struggle when it comes to eating healthy. I'm just literally throwing stuff out there. I'm just sharing, I'm just, you know, sharing off the top of my head. They would get two points. Day four, which is a Thursday, would be pop onto one of our coach Zooms and say hi for 10 points. Cause that, that takes a lot, right? So if they're doing these things, and even if they're added late, cause not everyone's gonna be added by Monday, they can go back in and catch up. Like they could join Wednesday and do all three days to catch up. But I, I was just thinking on that, um, when Liz was sharing that idea about adding more participation, and then we can choose a winner of whoever has the most participation points. Like whether they, they order or not, hopefully if they're the top participant, they're gonna end up joining Fit Club. But then every day they're gonna see their names, just like us, which is why we have accountability on our push Zoom with our names. They're going to see their names and their participation points. So it's almost like, like a mini fit club within a fit club. I don't know. It wouldn't be hard to do. I would just need people's name and anyone can go in and edit the doc. Like I think you guys can edit the doc and add people's names to it. We could just alphabetize it or whatever. But I was thinking that that could be something that could bring some participation, which hopefully brings more um, interest, which hopefully brings more conversations behind the scenes to get them set up to join the club. Can you guys give me any feedback about that? I like it. I think it's a good idea. Do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, cool. And it would be for, I think I said this, like only new prospects. Like I know, like if our current challengers, they're welcome to join, they're welcome, but they won't be listed in the files because they've already been in the group. Cool. Um, okay, so what I'll do is towards the end of this week, I, I took everyone out of the current launch group from September, except I think I left all the coaches and I have to double check. I'm going to rename it for something for October and our first day will be next Monday because that's October 1st. But this is a great time to go and follow up either. I would follow up first about our product party because that's just fun. Um, but that's a great, and if they already like, if they join something from the product party, like put them, put them right into um, the launch group because then they can still totally like have participation points and everything if they're a new person. Um, so I think that's a really good leeway into our next launch group. And then I think for the launch group too, like we'll do like a question of the day, but like no more than one of us post just a post once a day with information, or we can, you know, share a graphic on something 
but I think what we felt a little stressed with the first one because it was almost just too much going on. And then you would add someone and tag them and they, we wouldn't even know like where to, where we were going. So simplify and engagement. We'll see, we'll see if it works. Maybe some pumpkin spice shakeology as a giveaway, but let's talk about that later. Okay, and I think I just have one more thing before I wanted to get to your questions. Um, remember the law of process. So you guys uh, have been working in this push group for, this is just now starting your three weeks, third week. If you are doing all of this stuff, right, it's gonna take a couple months to really see the hard work start to pay off. And you might think you've been doing all this stuff for longer, but if you can honestly look at that push sheet and say, I've been doing all of these things Monday through Sunday for six months and I haven't succeeded, then let's talk, all right? But if you've been doing these things in the push training and, and you're pushed out of your comfort zone, you're talking to more people than you ever have, you're posting more, you're showing up more, then all you need is time. It's just like your health and fitness journey. It's gonna ebb and flow just like your, your business ebbs and flows with times of the year, seasons of life. But I wouldn't even be remotely concerned if you've not been putting in this level of work for at least three months. Do you know what I mean? Because when you are doing that level of work, stuff comes back to you in ways you can't even predict. When I'm on it and I'm consistent, I, look back and I'm like, oh, that's why that happened. I think people just come to me or someone just happens to respond to me out of nowhere. And that's not out of nowhere, that's out of the consistent work that I put in over time, okay? So it's easy to get discouraged as a coach. It's easy to think you're not made for this. It's easy to think, well, it's taken so long, you know, is it ever gonna happen? If you can say you have put in consistent work over that amount of time every single day, less on the weekends, we're human, then for, for six months, maybe you shouldn't be a coach. I'm totally being honest, but I don't think any of you are like, if you're at that level where you've just been pushing and pushing and pushing, and this is like a priority and you show up every single day and nothing's happening, then yeah, let's talk about it. But looking around, like stuff has happened for every single one of you. And while it doesn't always happen on our time frame, it happens when the work meets the time. Okay. Um, and you can all do it. And I have no doubt in any of you that you can build a team, that you can make money at this, that you can do this. The hardest part is the patience, it's just like your fitness journey. Some of you guys, all of you guys have awesome stories about your fitness, but it didn't happen overnight and you didn't work out. And then someone called you and they're like, you look amazing. It just doesn't happen. You got to have the time. Okay. So that was my little pep talk. Um, I want to get to your questions. Okay. Heather Marie, Instagram followers doesn't do PA crunch. You have followed almost a hundred people in the last week and one has followed back. Uh, looking for ideas on what you can improve as far as targeting people because that's not a good percent. No, that's not a good percentage of followbacks. I would be frustrated too. Um, are you? So I have. I'm uh, just so you know because I know we've talked about this a couple times. I am looking for people who have like the circle. So I'm, you know, I'm, it's not like I'm spending hours and hours going through everybody. Um, I am using that. Um, but yeah, I don't know if the if it's. I'm looking at some uh, mostly things that are local but not too small like things I don't know more like in a larger area that's near me and then because every time I feel like I've looked at some international things I'm finding people I mean I have found some people that I've connected with that are like in Norway and you know places that they're great I love their feed and it's cool I'm happy to have found them but you know it's not going to do anything for my business at least Mm -hmm. Not right now, but you know, so that's, I guess what I'm looking for is what are, what do you all target when you're looking for those of you who do it manually? What do you look for? Yeah. I'm going to open that up first to anyone who does do it with no outside. No outside. Holy, holy. Um, so I honestly don't follow or I do follow the ones that have the little circle on it. Cause that means their page is public. But I don't go for those because I found that most people that have public pages, they're selling something too, or like they're Advocare or Rodent and Fields or whatever. So I don't really want to follow them. Um, so I go to like, I shop online a lot. So I go to online boutiques and I follow every single person in there. And then whoever follows me back, then I filter through those because I clean up my Instagram with that. I can't think of the app, but the little app every Sunday. 
yeah, I got that as well. And so I've been using it, but it's like I'm removing everybody, it seems like almost that I follow. Try going for more private pages. Then. Okay. Um, I just feel like, cause my, I mean, I had mine public before I started Beachbody, I had mine private. So I just, so did I, I feel like the people that have most private pay or public pages are showing their page for a reason. Yeah. I found a lot of like essential oil people, yeah. which I <laughs> thought, I mean, that's cool, but I, wow. Didn't realize there were so many of those. I didn't either. And I would say, Send them our little PBJ thing, and they're like, "Oh no!" But if you want some essential oils, right. I got that. Yes. And I'm like, Let me know. Not yeah. what I'm getting at. <laughs> yeah. so I go to online boutiques, um, golden retriever pages because I'm obsessed with golden retrievers. Um, newlyweds because I'm a newlywed. House renovations, just random stuff like that. I don't feel okay. like I have hobbies. Well, like, these so are these are paid, like you go to Instagram, just to confirm, you go to Instagram pages and with like a medium following and then you're literally going to their followers and you're just, you're just like following every single person. Yep. Okay. Does I there mean, I look at their little picture. I, yeah. I'm a little judgmental. So I kind of like, I don't oh. click on their page anymore. Like I used to, okay. I look at the little picture and I just follow, 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 and then clean up from there. That's okay. a really cool idea. So do you, um, is there a limit, like, do you look for pages with a certain number of followers? You don't, obviously, if you find one that has like 8 million followers, you're like, well, that would take a very long time. But what do you do in terms of like the, the size of the page that you're getting your followers from? Does it matter? I don't really pay attention. I just, whenever I have time at work, I'll go to different random pages and just start following. And then when I have to get back to work, I stop. Um, so I do that multiple times throughout the day and I'll just go to random different pages. And you'll probably get like literally go down the list and start clicking. <laughs> Would you say like a hundred, like how many, if, if you had to estimate, are you following a day? Um, probably a hundred to 200. I, yeah. okay. a lot. I do that rather than like looking at Facebook. I like it. I'm going to try it. <laughs> and how, okay, so last question. If you, cause you don't necessarily get a notification when someone private accepts you but you get a notification if they follow you back right mm -hmm. so so then i go to my followers on yeah. my page because it puts them in order of who recently follows you so then i just go through that and go through their page real quick i'll like a few things and then i'll send them my invite if i oh, well, feel you, you'll still get a notification on instagram if, if they even if they're private if they follow you back right like you'll get yes. that notification okay to me i lose those Okay. throughout all my notifications. So I just go to my followers on my page and just go through that list of who's following me. And then you use cleaner once a week to unfollow any of those who haven't followed you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've actually grown my Instagram a lot um, since I've started doing this. I'm I might do proud. that. That's a really <laughs> good idea. Um, Cause I know a lot of us do PA crunch, but a lot of people also do their own as well. PA, PA crunch. We're in a, we're in a hate relationship right now. We were in a love relationship. Can I ask a question about PA Crunch? Hold on one second. Sorry. Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah. So this is what I, I, I started using it again because it was just, it just is becoming like, I didn't really have the time to do the whole like follower thing or I wasn't making the time. Let's just say that. But anyway, I feel like PA Crunch is like, they kind of just use their clients and like follow like, do you see that? Like, I feel like they're just like using their pool of clients to like follow each other. Does that, cause I feel like it's, it's yeah. like, I'm following so many of the same people that you guys are following. Like I'm getting connected to so many of the same people that you, and, and I don't do the whole like discover cause that, that gets, you know what I mean? Like that's just connecting me to people who everyone else is connected to anyway. Right. Do you, do you feel that way or is it just me? No, I feel like there's too many people in the world for me to like look at someone and say, oh, followed by Christy, followed by, you know, yeah, I feel mm -hmm. like that is, there's something sketch going on there. And I'm thinking of now to hear Coley say this, I have paused it so many times because I'm like, there's got to be a better way because sometimes there it's been great. And then lately it's been like, I'm not like, I'm not satisfied. But again, I wasn't making the time because I felt like I was spending so much time to click follow on one person. If I just massive follow people, based on a, a page that I like, that's already an interest, 
that's going to take me five minutes as opposed to 30 minutes it was taking me. And I can pause PA Crunch because honestly, they're not like, I've, I think Tessa said too, she said, invites are great. Like she's no trouble with invites. It's just having the people to invite. And Norton PA Crunch was doing that for me about a month ago. And I'm like, I need to get one, maybe one a day that I can send an invite to. And that's just not enough. So yeah, I think so too, Chris. Like yeah. I'm gaining followers, but I'm like, who are these people? I How am I even yeah. communicating with these people? <laughs> like, it doesn't matter if they're not quality people. Like who cares what your followers are? What matters? Yeah, that's the thing. Like it's nice to have that little number go up, but I'm also like, I you people mean nothing. To me. No offense to these people. <laughs> you mean right? nothing. Right. Like, <laughs> your hair account means nothing to me. No, I know. That's the hair <laughs> accounts are crazy. There's so many. So what if we all did what Coley suggested? If you're tired, if, if you're happy with PA Crunch or a service you use, go for it. But I think we're all so you not oh, we all have a lot in common, but we're also very unique in that maybe my a page I follow wouldn't be a page you follow. And if I can follow those followers, then I think that you know we're you could start to build your followership based on who you really want to build. And it can take you, like Coley said, a couple minutes when you have a couple because don't even worry about it. Just follow. And if they follow you back and you're like, oh, you're not really my audience. <clears throat> then don't message them. It's fine. Um, cool. Okay, that was really helpful, Coley. Thank you. How long have you been doing it that way? Like the private followers? Um, probably a few weeks. Maybe a month. Maybe not that long. Less than a month. Uh, I think I might start trying that because that seems very easy and quick. I have actually been doing... Go. Sorry. Go ahead, Liz. Um, I've been doing the same thing as Coley but searching like hashtags that kind of have things to do with kids and moms. Um, and I, this week I started just commenting on like at least one of their pictures where before I wasn't doing that, I was just following. And I've gotten so many more people following me back this week from doing that versus just following and moving on. Okay. Um, same. So, so you'll I, use the hashtags like that now. public accounts. Like they have to be public cause you'll comment and you'll follow. Right. Okay. And I've had a lot of people respond to me then on my comment, and then they'll follow me back. Okay. okay. I um, go through my newsfeed if I'm like scrolling my newsfeed, and I'll comment on people's pictures that I like. I don't know if they're following me or not, but I've actually had a lot of people follow me. Well, I guess they're not following me, but I've had a lot of people follow me after I comment on their stuff too. Like if I'm scrolling my newsfeed before I clean out my Instagram, if I I don't know like something or someone's dress or whatever i'll comment that and they've liked it and then followed me back awesome i do think that's a really really good personal touch so if we could merge these ideas to like comment whenever you can follow a like crap ton of people because you can always clean it up once a week it's two seconds and comment whenever you see something you want to genuinely comment on i think merging the two is really going to help grow a followership then to also grow legit genuine invites because they're people that you clearly have stuff in common with okay we we're running out of time soon but that was super helpful thank you i'm about to just cancel pa crunch hate them just kidding i sort of hate them um, um, i have a quick question on the cleaner part yeah um do you do it where it only does like the 50 at a time because i feel like i go through and i cook a lot and i put them in my queue and then i forget to clean it out and yeah and i try not to do it too close together where my accounts can block me out for a bit yeah I do a very like 30 at a time so it doesn't do that okay so like just like throughout the day on like Sunday you just like yeah keep going back in. it takes a little bit but yeah that is what I do that way because I'd same thing I'd forget yep yeah I kind of stop at 40 I don't know why but if I do several times throughout the day and get log out of the app log back in and usually lets me and I can I can drop it down by hundreds just by doing that one day okay cool Okay. Thank um, thanks guys. That was super helpful. And Kathy, I need to clean out Instagram. You probably answered this. Yeah. Right. Cleaner, yeah. Yeah. And even with five through one follow-up, still nothing on some, did I answer that in terms of uh, like what to do? So if you send a PPJ message, you do the five, three, one, you send them another message and they never respond. Like when you're cleaning up the next week, I will delete and unfollow just because mm -hmm. I'm not going to keep messaging them or liking on their right. stuff if they've never responded. Right. Yeah. Um, that's about it because Saturdays and Sundays with our tracker reminds me to go in and do my five, three ones. And I'm like OCD. So I need to clean up my inbox. I can't let it get too long. It'll 
stress me out. And that's my reminder to say, did they ever respond? Did I 531? Is it time to unfollow? Is it time to delete the message, but keep following them because we did, we were, and I'm like, I want to be true to my word. Like, even if they're not interested, I'm not in it just to get someone to join me. Like I want to continue following them if I want to follow them. So I'm not going to unfollow them. them. They just said, no, thank you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we have a couple minutes left. Are there any other questions? I'm going to end the recording before I forget to bed. Bye, Tessa.